I'm here with Kevin Mikulowski from USCCA. Kevin is also the uh, executive editor of Concealed Carry Magazine, and he is one of the big honchos over at Delta Defense, too. Kevin, welcome. Thank you for having me, John. It's really good to be here. Yeah, it was great. I got to spend a lot of time with you guys over at your facility in uh, Iola, Wisconsin, and we shot some training videos there, and I was amazed at, at the, how professional you guys are and what a great uh, venue you have in order to put on your training. Yeah, we, it's have, amazing. A, we have an outstanding team, and uh, um, Delta Defense has uh, put together just a great facility. They give us everything we ask for. So uh, when, when we brought you in, we had, we had built an entire uh, back alley scene and, uh, and made our proving ground system inside that studio. So yeah, It's really neat, too, because you really make it very realistic by you... Uh, yeah, you're using people from Delta Defense, mm -hmm. but they have no clue as to what the scenario is going to be prior to you filming yep. it and how you're going to change it up. And even afterwards, you'd send them back away and you would change up the, uh, the scenario just a little bit. So every time they came out, it was something a little different. And I would go in the back room and I'd watch these two. <laughs> and they're trying to strategize and figure out how they're going to make this work and, and how they're going to overcome the scenario. But there's no way you can anticipate it if you're going to change it every time. What was really nice about that is it, it got them amped up yeah, like and, you would be and, in real life. And that's just it. We, we try to make training as real as possible. And if you're just going to stand still in a range and put some shots down range, that's not what it's going to be like when you're in a fight. Right. And we're trying to teach people to get out of that fight alive. And, and so if we can switch it up even just a little bit, just move somebody from one end of the room to the other, it, it changes the entire dynamic. Well, talk, talk too, about your, your, uh, the, the, the training tools that you use. I was really impressed with uh, the vests yep. and uh, the weapons. You know, tell yep. everybody exactly what yep. you guys do. We for use, um, for the Proving Ground program, we use the stress vest system, which is a laser-actuated vest that provides, we call it electronic stimulation, but, you know, it just shocks the heck out of them. I mean, they get hit in the stomach like they're getting stung by a bee. And that provides a little bit of the, the pain penalty wakes people up and lets them know that, hey, I don't want to get shot. This is no longer a game. This is going to hurt when I'm involved with this. So the, uh, that's one of the key elements of what we're doing. It also allows us, um, rather than using any sort of, of uh, simulated ammunition, um, it allows us to see their faces and to hear their voices because so much of what goes on in a deadly force incident is the eyes and the face and the voice inflection and things like that. You need to be able to tell the intent of what's going to happen and to make yourself clear. If you tell somebody to stop, you want them to stop. You don't, we don't want that muffled by a face mask or anything. So. Now, you do, you do that so well, and uh, Rob Pincus and I talked earlier about this too, where and we as, as law enforcement officers realize that you can get into the training trap where you continually train the same thing over again and you're training in a bubble and you're not learning right. anything new. Yeah. And that's where I think Delta Defense comes in and is so effective in that if you go and you watch some of your videos mm -hmm. and you're able to get a little bit more and maybe something that you hadn't thought about because you do tend to become insular if you're not trying to yeah. think out of the box and get these things. And, and you guys are really good at yeah, that. Yeah, and we've put together eight different editions of the Proving Ground so far. And in every one, we've tried to predict what we think the trainee will do. And every single time, we have been wrong. They have done something completely different. We, When we're evaluating with the trainers prior to going in, we say, we'll give them this option and we expect them to move to the left or do something. They never do what we expect them to do. Once they get put under stress, all bets are off. We don't know where they're going to go, and we're, we're just having the cameramen follow them. And then we evaluate after we're done and say, well, here, you went to the left. Maybe there was an exit. You should have gone to the right, you know, something like that. So. Yeah, it, and that's the thing is it could go down a million different ways. You just don't know every time what's going to happen. What I liked about the proving ground that we did with you is, is that you shot an entire scenario first you train them and you shot an entire scenario without using viridian products right and you went through the whole thing and then the next day i come yep. in and we put these people together with our our uh, c our c series and our x series we put them on the weapons and right away when i started training both of these people we noticed immediately even though they're under duress under stress their groups really came in yep. much tighter than you said that they were the day before and it was an opportunity that that the trainees had never had. The, and that's what we love to do, is give them a, a, a different opportunity every time they look at a scenario and get in there. So we ran them through a dark alley, and we shot at them, and we had bad guys coming out swinging crowbars at them and everything like that. And then you got there, and I said, okay, now John's gonna give you a light, and John's gonna give you a laser, and we're gonna see what you guys do with stuff like that. And 
within minutes they had it figured out. Um, you, you were outstanding in, in training both Jesse and Sandy when we did that that operation, and I was I was so impressed at how quickly um, the Viridian materials just put them right back on target and as you know we increase the hit ratio by like 50 percent after the first scenario yeah probably the response time as well the yeah. lag time probably yeah. reduced too because again they didn't have to turn the unit on as the unit right. as it was coming out of the holster the unit was going on and really the only reminder i had to give them is look you don't have to turn it off it'll turn itself yeah. off when it goes back in the holster <laughs> yep. at the end of the scenario they kind of breathe deeply huh, and then they put it back in the holster and they're done mm -hmm. but we noticed a reduction in lag time we noticed uh, a, a, a reduction in the group. The grouping tightened up much more. Yep. And, uh, you know, it's very nice for me to see that y it's always nice when you're, you're pushing the product to see, wow, this really is effective and it does work well in yep. the real world yep. with people that, you know, uh, have no stake in your in your uh, in your success. They're using it and they're using it effectively. And that's what we were trying to show them is that um, you know the, the two trainees who came in, um, we could give them a different tool and they had to learn and train with this tool. But it automatically provided something extra, something that that people don't think about when they're doing their training. Um, we think about looking at the front sight when we're out at the range. But um, I just finished an active shooter scenario um, with my local sheriff's department last week. And I can remember coming through into the room where the active shooter was, trying to remind myself to look at that front sight because the, the sim rounds were whizzing past me on each side. So if we can give them that tool that just intuitively puts them on target, like you said, we cut down their response time, um, we increased their hit ratio. It was, uh, it, it was truly an eye-opening training for both of those trainees. And you're training uh, a lot of bad habits out of there, too. I right. noticed with a lot of your proving ground stuff and the things that you guys do is people have the Hollywood perception of how mm -hmm. things are supposed to be yeah. and how things, the way things go. And you guys see that and you look, this is real world and this is what is going to happen to you in the real world. You're not going to have time to take that perfect isosceles or weaver stance. This isn't putting holes in paper down at the end of the range. This yeah. is about keeping you alive, firing from uh, a uh, compromised position. Maybe you have to fire one-handed. You have to fire from cover, and it's less than ideal, and the light is low. And uh, you guys were so effective in being able to do that in a lot of the training that you do. I think the big, most important thing we do is teach people how quickly things like this happen. And uh, in, in all of the Proving Ground TV series that we've been doing so far to this point, every single one of the trainees who've come out of it has said after the first scenario, I didn't realize it was going to happen that fast. And you know what? Um, the, the span of 50 feet or 21 feet or 3 feet really makes a huge difference on when you need to react. You need to start this loop much sooner, and you need to get in the game much sooner because the bad guy already knows what he's going to do. And right. we're trying to teach people to react to that, and you're already behind the curve. So now you need all the help you can get. In, in Delta Defense, what do you see as the biggest mistake that somebody just coming in and trying to learn from you makes the the, sing, the most singular most the biggest mistake the, the biggest mistake that most people make is that they, they f feel like the gun is going to protect them and i tell people all the time that the root word of gunfight is fight not gun it's in your head um, the gun is a tool that you're using in the fight you have to have that mindset that this is a fight and it's going to happen fast and i'm going to win and that's the one thing that, that a lot of people I talk to, first-time gun owners, they, I got my gun, I'm okay. Well, wait a minute. Why don't you try to pull that out and see if I can grab it before you do it. If we're at this distance, you know, um, uh, I was talking to Tim Kennedy a couple of weeks ago, and uh, Tim said, at contact distance, if you try to pull your gun, I'm going to beat you to death. And that is something people need to understand. Is, exactly. Is how quickly something can happen. So We get that as cops. Yeah. Because you're always going out on people or you're going out on traffic yep. stops and people can be on you in a second and you have yeah. to be able to react and you have to know that there are bad people in the world. Yep. But you're right. The average citizen that's arming themselves thinks of that gun as just a warm blanket. Right. And it's a panacea. It's yep. going to keep me secure. It's going to keep me safe. Yeah. No, it's how you train. It's a tool. Like you said, it's a tool and it's an implement and it's how you're using that yeah. and that you have to train with that. Yeah. We put one guy through the uh, proving ground. Um, Mike came in uh, in the proving ground and we, we had a man charge him with a hammer. He didn't know it was coming and he backed up a good 50 feet trying to run backwards and in the space of maybe six feet, he was only able to put one round on target. And uh, that was an eye-opener for him because he was a good shot. He was a great shot at the range. But when the stress came and he had to be running backwards, drawing the gun, trying to get offline, 
it all changes. And uh, you don't get to do that any other place but when you're out doing scenario-based training. And that's, that just goes to show you, too, I mean, it's, yes, it's important to carry a, a, a weapon that you're familiar with, but you have to train, 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 train. Yep, all and the you time. have to know how that weapon comes out of your holster. Uh, you know, if, if you're using, hopefully, a laser from mm -hmm. us, that, yep. uh, that laser is on and in a position that you like it, whether it's laser light or just the laser or pulsing, yep. that you've got it set up for the way you want it and that you're continually visualizing what could possibly happen yeah. uh, during any, any type of a situation. Yeah, we tell people that, you know, your body can't go where your mind hasn't been. You need to think this through before it's going to happen because you're never going to learn any new skills in the middle of a gunfight. That's, you know, you got the rest of your life to figure out what you're going to do. You, you better have it planned out. Absolutely. So, so what's going on with Concealed Carry Magazine? Anything uh, new coming up? Well, we have the uh, the new quarterly women's section that comes uh, every quarter now. So uh, every other edition of Concealed Carry Magazine inv involves uh, 24 pages just by, for, and about women. Um, and that's been getting uh, great, great uh, coverage, a lot of good comments about that. Um, and uh, we're going through different themes. Outdoor recreation is the most recent theme um, because we're reminding people that no matter where you go, um, just because you've decided to go hiking or off to the boat ramp or something like that, that... And bad guys can show up there as well. So we're, we're really trying to put a human face on what happens with Concealed Carry. Um, we don't ever want Concealed Carry Magazine to just be your grandpa's gun magazine. We want right. to talk about every issue that might come up, whether it's out hiking on the trail or working with your kids. Um, Concealed Carry Magazine goes from A to Z. So Great. How about Delta Defense? Anything going on with them recently that, um, well, we uh, just, as far as training uh, or... Uh, we just opened our brand new headquarters in West Bend, Wisconsin. So uh, we moved to a great, big, new, beautiful, gleaming building, and that is outstanding. So, um, and uh, the uh, training program is growing by leaps and bounds. Um, the uh, both the instructor side, and uh, we're also working with our legal advisory board. Uh, we now have hundreds of attorneys who are on staff as part of USCCA law. So. Uh, the folks who are covered by our insurance are also covered by our attorneys. We can get them an attorney if they want it. And uh, that's the, uh, um, the biggest thing that I've seen happening recently is we now have uh, attorneys in all 50 states who will answer the phone 24 hours a day. That's so, so important. Oh, my <laughs> yeah. goodness, because we all know that this, yeah. these, these events can happen 24 hours a day, yep. seven days a week. And when you need that attorney, you better be able to get yeah, a hold of them and call them, too. <laughs> Absolutely. You and, know, and how much easier are you going to make that attorney's job if you've got a fact yeah. Uh, type camera yeah. system, which we can talk about here, too, is, yeah. um, you know, being able to draw and actually uh, show and depict exactly what was seen mm -hmm. uh, when that trigger breaks. Yeah, and that's the coolest thing that uh, I've seen about the FACT system is that it's given us a forward-looking view of what we're seeing at the same time. And um, I understand that, that, that an attorney may be able to question chain of custody on, on evidence or anything like that. But you know what? It's still out there. And, and he's going to question what you did anyway. You get to show him a video of what you saw at the time you fired your gun. Um, I got to believe that you are winning that case because 90% um, of the people who are involved in, in deadly force incidents are doing the right thing anyway. So Absolutely, a, they are. You're going to yeah. silence a lot of naysayers. Oh, we yeah. believe with, with something to that, of, mm -hmm. of, of being able to use something like that. And, uh, yeah, tell us a little bit more about that insurance, too. Um, USCCA insurance covers you for both criminal and civil cases. So if you're involved in a deadly force incident, um, the minute you get the opportunity to make a phone call, you call USCCA, and we have a 24-hour hotline. And uh, someone will answer that phone, and get you an attorney and immediately pay that attorney's retainer so that attorney is working for you from that moment. And uh, then we pay your legal fees um, on, the, on the criminal side up to $125,000 um, immediately. You don't have to pay us back. You don't have to get reimbursed or anything like that. We lay out the legal fees. We pay you if you've got to go to court when you're uh, um, off work, um, with, you know, up to 500 bucks a day. It's, uh, um, it's a system that basically... When you need help, when, when it's the worst day of your life, we're right there to make sure that you got everything covered. So important in this day and age, you know, and that brings up a really good point as far as uh, what you're seeing through your vast experience is for the average law-abiding citizen carrying concealed today, uh, yeah. carrying a firearm, what's the biggest threat to them? The biggest threat to them is the legal system. It's a, it, it's a damn meat grinder, um, and, and people don't understand just how that worst day of your life is going to spread out to maybe even the worst couple of years of your life um, when you drop in there. Because w when you're involved in a shooting, people are going to question every single thing that you did. And you know, from a legal perspective, we can say rightly so, because we want this shooting to be justi justified. Um, 
But we have to remember that if you're involved in a shooting and, and someone dies, that's a homicide investigation. And what the homicide investigators are going to be looking for is whether or not that was justified. And so the biggest questions we get all the time is when can I use my gun and what's going to happen to me afterwards? And those are the questions that we try to answer and then correct those problems. And when I say problems, it's, you know, think about this. Do you know what you're going to do when you end up in jail? Because they're going to take you in at least for questioning before sure. things happen. And I tell people all the time, I don't care how long your concealed carry class was, my investigation into your shooting is going to be longer than that class. So if you, if you had a four-hour class, I am going to, as an investigating officer, be investigating that shooting a lot longer than your four-hour class. Exactly. So, um, those are the big questions. Those are the, 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 the concerns that new people are coming into this. Um, because you see it on the news every day that somebody's involved in a shooting, what's going to happen to them next? I mean, and, and it's, uh, it's, we don't want to talk about the shooting. They go to the family of the victim who got shot, and that person's on the news, and, and the person who was defending himself got vilified. And yeah. we want to make sure that we stop that from the get-go. You mean that little angel that uh, was yep. holding a paperback book and not a knife or a yep. gun? He yeah. was on his way to get a job. and, right. and Just yeah. getting his life back together? Yeah. That guy? So, yep. Yeah, yeah. Okay, we all know about that guy, right? <laughs> yeah. Okay, so taking it a little different spin, um, we know what the biggest threat is right now to uh, those of us who are carrying uh, law-abiding citizens. But when we're talking about our loved ones and our family members today, in the world today, in America today, um, what do you see as the biggest threat to your family, your loved ones, and what, what kind of training do you try to impart to them that they live with every day? I, I really stress situational awareness um, because you can look around from all of the, the, the absolute, uh, and I hate to use the word crazy, but all the crazy things that have happened from San Bernardino to Dallas to Orlando, all over the place, um, Nobody could have predicted those. So you right. have to be alert. You have to pay attention to what's going on around you. And, and I don't want you to be paranoid, but I certainly want you to know where the escape routes are. Um, if you come into a building, you should know how to get out of that building. Um, if you uh, are paying attention, you can see which people are carrying guns. They're usually moving stuff around or something like that. And, and you, you do that sort of, you know, that optical pat down sort of thing and see what this guy's doing and, and pay attention to that and act sooner. Um, don't think, um, you know, I, I don't have to worry about this because you may have to worry about that. And if you wait too long, then, you know, things go bad. And again, time is life. You know, that's so critical. Yeah. You know, you're absolutely right in that hesitation is what's going to get you killed. Right. And that's what I, I try to impart to my family as well. And, you know, I say, look, uh, on an active shooter in a shopping mall or anywhere else on the whole fight, flight, hide thing, mm -hmm. um, I want you, I want you, I want flight. Yeah. And I want you to do it quick. Yep. Those are last resorts. Yeah. Fighting and hiding. I, really, yep. hiding is going to get you killed. Uh, unless you have a weapon, there's no reason to hide. There's no reason to hide. <laughs> yeah. And I, you know, I always tell my daughter, I go, you're in the mall. You hear shots fired. I want go into a store. Why would I go into a store, Dad? Because the store has a back door right. where they take the trash and the inventory in and out of that goes to a back hallway, which goes to a loading dock, which goes mm -hmm. to the parking lot, which goes to your freedom. Yeah. So I said, just... Get out of that main area. Don't let that shooter see you. Just keep moving until you're out and you're in daylight. Yeah, I had a, uh, a very uh, arduous parent-teacher conference uh, with my uh, children at the elementary school because uh, I explained to both kids they had a school that had no doors. It was an open concept school, and and we had some threats that we had to deal with. And I told both my boys that if you hear you know, the loud gunshots, you hear gunshots, you know what it's like, you've been to the range with me, I want you out the door and across the street and into the woods. And they said, well, no, a teacher wants us to hide in the corner. No, I don't care what she wants. I want you out and away. More distance is more safety. And uh, so I got called in to explain why I was, you know, going against the school board policy of what they might do in an active shooter situation. And I said, it's just going to get those kids killed. I want the kids outside. If we don't have lockable doors, things, places where we can put a barrier between the bad guy and us, I want people just gone. And just what did they say way. to that? And, well, they, they, they still argued with me, and they didn't want to change their policy. My boys knew what to do. So Good. <laughs> That's all that matters. You <laughs> yeah. know, hey, yeah, you know, yeah. <laughs> you better ask for forgiveness <laughs> than permission, yeah. right? Right. Yeah. Absolutely. So, Absolutely. So um, 
you know, going down the road in the future, where do you see your training going with Delta Defense, and what are you guys moving towards? Um, we just finished a book called um, this, uh, uh, um, Countering the Active Shooter, uh, Countering the Mass Shooter Threat. Um, so we'll, we have an entire 200-page uh, book um, that's dedicated to the civilian response to active shooter dangers. And uh, that's one of the things that everybody is asking about. I, was, I am absolutely surprised at how many church groups call USCCA looking for training for the church and but th then they then they say well don't tell anybody that we th we're doing this you know but we have we have an active team that's that's working inside the church just in case something happens um, that and a lot of teachers um, we're getting a lot of teachers mostly from the southern and western states and the more rural areas who want to know what should they do in the event of an active shooter situation and I never tell them to break the law, and I never tell them to violate any policies, but um, you know, we're giving them some good insight on what's coming up next. We want, um, if, you're, if you're going to utilize the, the hide option of the run, hide, fight that people are so happy to talk about right now, you shouldn't be hiding unless you have a means to fight back when you're found. Because you know, w we look at, the, at the, the shooter at Virginia Tech, he had 11 minutes to do what he wanted to do. That's a right. lot of time to find somebody. So if you can put 200 yards between you and that shooter in a minute or two minutes, um, that's much better than kind of hiding in the corner and waiting for the attack to come. Such a great point, too, because a lot of people don't know what the active shooter mindset is. You know, right. and they just think that, you know, maybe if I just hide, well, if you're allowing that person the time, they're going to find you. Yeah. They're looking for those uh, th those uh, people that are just lemmings that are following the other yep. ones that are just hiding and they're not mm -hmm. they're not actively trying to either fight or get out of there. They're going for the easiest targets. Yeah. And uh, an active shooter is going to stay up and he's going to stay mobile and he's going to keep shooting until there are no more people to shoot. Right. And a lot of people also don't understand that an active shooter has a pre-designated plan. If they're, if they're point A and they kill everybody there, they've already got a B, C, and D that yep. they're going to move to after that. Right. They kill everybody at their own work, then maybe they're going to go home and do it, or maybe they're going to go to their wife's work and do it, or mm -hmm. whatever. That You have to be uh, fluid in your capabilities to combat somebody like that. Yeah, and uh, you know the, the vast majority of active shooters who face resistance stop their aggressive behavior almost immediately, and more than half end up killing themselves. Right. Even if you don't shoot at them, if you stop them in some way, um, it just sort of get them out of their mindset of what's happening and suddenly they're facing some sort of resistance. So I'm a big fan of, of fighting back, but making sure that we use an effective tools that we can put our rounds on target that if we have to, um, I love bright lights. You know, I would much rather fight somebody who can't see me if I'm shining a light in their eyes. So. Exactly. Too. And the other thing with, for civilians that are, are looking at taking on an active shooter, realize that the eventuality of a police response, it's going to happen. And right. you don't want to be mistaken as the active shooter. So if you're going right. to act, act quick and yep. try to do the right thing yeah. and, you know, holster your weapon, whatever. If you've, if you've neutralized the threat, make sure everybody knows that. Get on 911, make a call, say this is what I'm wearing, this is a description. I always told my wife, I said that uh, if, if that happens and i got to go to work, you're the one on 911 giving my physical description out while I'm going hunting. Yeah. And, and that's the way it's going to be because I don't want to be cut down by friendly fire. And that's so likely because yeah. think about the poor cop rolling in. All he sees is a person with a gun. Right. And so we have to have that situational awareness, realizing that the eventuality, law enforcement's going to show up. Don't get mistaken as the bad guy. Yeah. And I want to stress to people, too, before you get involved in an active shooter, if, if there's bullets flying and you hear them flying, and you come around the corner and there's somebody shooting, you don't know what's going on yet. Right. You need to assess that situation before because you might engage somebody who is already engaging the active shooter. And you don't want to be the person who just shot the good guy. Right. So, um, you know, deadly force is a last resort always. And, uh, and that assessment, that threshold assessment before you're crossing into there, you know, I, I tell people all the time when we're training, there's, there's three places you can get in a gunfight, from outside the room, right into the doorway, or inside the room. Where would you rather be? I'd rather be fighting from outside the Heck room. Heck yeah, you, you would. Know, <laughs> so that gives yeah. me a little bit more opportunity to get out of the way if, if things are coming. Well, my you got way. a little more cover. You got the door jam. Yeah. You got a lot of other things at your disposal too. Yeah. So, 
Uh, it's just such, you know, timely topics and such timely training to be putting that stuff on. I'm really glad to yeah. see that you guys are doing that. Yeah, and uh, and we're also following up with a, a very serious uh, first aid approach program, too. We've, um, we've got a new first aid book out there, and uh, um, we've added a, a first aid columnist, um, a trauma care columnist to Concealed Carry Magazine. So every issue of Concealed Carry Magazine um, it, it references gunshot wound first aid. And I tell people all the time, if you're carrying a gun, you should be carrying a first aid kit, um, at least a tourniquet. And, you know, I was going <laughs> to say a tourniquet's the most yep. important thing that yep. you could carry. And so uh, there's a lot of guys who, you know, look at a first aid kit as, you know, Band-Aids and, and triple antibiotic ointment. And that's not what we need. Um, you know, a, a tourniquet and, and some sort of uh, uh, chemical blood inhibitor, whether it be Celox or, or uh, something else like that, uh, something that is going to address a major wound. And, yeah. You know. you know, that's a required class in my uh, old police department with the academy recruits, and it's yep. required annual training is that you have to go through that tourniquet training. Yeah. And uh, we actually had a cop shot in the upper leg, hit his femoral, femoral artery, and uh, it saved his life. They had to put yeah. that tourniquet darn near right up in his groin mm -hmm. to get that thing cranked down enough to stop the bleeding. But yeah. um, they do save lives and they do work. And yeah. then, of course, uh, time frame is such an element to be able to get them to medical attention as yeah. quickly as possible. Yeah, we need to, uh, you know, um, stop the killing and then uh, stop the bleeding afterwards. Exactly, so. exactly. And that's the other thing, too, is a lot of people will hesitate, cops included, during an active shooter situation where yeah. you're, the hesitation comes as you're going through a doorway and you see maybe a child lying there shot. Mm -hmm. And... It's our instinct as parents. It, we have to fight against every instinct that we have to step over that child and get to the shooter before he gets the ch to the child that hasn't been shot yet. Yeah. Because the mindset has to be, I might not be able to save this one anyway, but I darn sure can save the one that hasn't been shot yet. Yeah, there's still more killing going on. There's still more killing there, going so. on, and if you can, you need to get in and you need to stop that. Mm -hmm. And then afterwards, when the threat's neutralized, then go back and start rescuing. It's yeah. such a difficult mindset not only for a civilian population, but for law enforcement professionals too, to get to that mindset because we do care and we, we do nurture and we yeah. do want to rescue. It, it's our job to help. And, right. and if there's somebody there who needs help, it's very difficult to walk past them, but we're helping other people by making sure we stop that shooter first. Uh, that's so, so, so essential. So where are you guys doing this active shooter training at in your um, facility? Uh, um, right now, um, we're, we, we have the book and we're putting together a training for our certified trainers. So our certified trainers will be able to help train their guys. So uh, we don't, um, we're not putting on the active shooter training for the general public yet. Um, we're starting at the at the higher level. At the train the uh, trainer yeah, level. Train the trainer level. And getting everybody um, first to understand what it is that they need to know. Um, that's why we want, we want them to look at that textbook and we want them to understand the statistics, how active shooters operate, and what they can do best to stop them when they're involved. So, And that is just fantastic stuff that you guys are doing because a lot of people shy away from that type of violence or training against that type of violence is like, well, that might not ever happen or whatever. But you guys just yeah. go right, bold face, right into it and address it. Yeah, we're not. Which is nice to we're see. We're not training for the probability. We're training for the possibility because you know, uh, until uh, I tell people all the time, you can have my gun when you can accurately predict where the next crime is going to occur, and we can't do that now. And no. and even even me in in a small town as a small town cop, it still takes me four minutes to get across town. You know, sure. And for a lot of bad stuff can happen in four minutes. Oh, it's, a, it's an attorney. That's a lifetime. And that's yeah. at a point in time where a legally armed citizen could be actually taking care of the action. Yep. Yeah. Immediate action drills. That's what we call them, you know, because you want that to happen immediately. And waiting for a police officer to arrive is not immediate. Well, I'll tell you, you, you know, this, this guy's a wealth of knowledge for anybody that wants uh Wants more information, go to USCCA, Delta Defense, and absolutely read Concealed Carry Magazine. Kevin, it's so great to have Thank you here. Thank you very much, John. Really Thanks so much for here. your time today. I appreciate Alrighty. it. All right.